लाइफ स्टोरी what would you to say to somebody watching tonight or maybe later on during the week or even months down the line when if they are seeking um to be an evangelist or to serve the lord how would they he- hear that voice or is there anything you could say to them that could help them well i think if if people um you know really feel in their hearts that and i think we we discover our giftings by you know what we kind of like doing if you like uh, mm. it, it becomes not a drudgery but it becomes something that we get uh, a lot of satisfaction from and you know and in church life back over the years that you know i could pinpoint people in the church that were personal evangelists because they brought the most people to church and uh, you know they were probably some of them were quite outgoing others might have been different in personality but they they just loved sharing jesus with people and uh, i think if if people um you know feel that that maybe is what god is calling them to do then to keep you know keep sharing jesus with people uh, to wait upon the lord listen to his voice you know spend time sometimes we 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 want to make a noise all the time sometimes it's good to be quiet listen to you know allow god to communicate with us and i think over over a period of time if god is speaking to us uh, you know that gets confirmed it'll get confirmed with other people and uh, then if that's the route or the route i'm speaking american now the route uh, the route <laughs> to, the way to go um then i think you know read as many books on evangelism as you can get fired up you know read through the book of acts and you know it'll it'll come together excellent just tell us a little bit about how it unfolded for you because I mean, did it happen overnight did it take a number of years before you actually became to preach or things like that um no i mean i i really really had a passion to you know share jesus with other people in fact when i when i first became a christian i read any books about how to how to share jesus with others so i i'd give them the whole works you know right. uh, in in about 5 minutes <laughs> <laughs> you know you need to repent of your sin turn to jesus get baptized in water then you can be filled with the holy ghost and and then there's nine gifts of the spirit and i go through all of this and they'd be stood there quite confused <laughs> uh, but uh, and you know i used to i was quite blunt with my dad because i'd never read the books on how to witness you know and i'd ask him to come to church and and maybe he'd say well i'm not coming and i'd say well you know you're not going to get to heaven then so that's up to you <laughs> and i'd walk out and but you know eventually he came um so i i i love to share jesus with people as young people we do open airs and i remember one day the lord challenged me to go round every house in our village about 200 houses everybody knew each other a bit like coronation street you know and uh, and I knocked on every door and witnessed to them told them I'd become a Christian that that was a challenge but I did it uh, but I think when people have got that uh, you know that calling upon them whether it's to just personal evangelism or it's a, you know the ministry of an evangelist you know just keep sharing Jesus and looking for ways to reach people and one of the greatest verses i think in the new testament is that it says jesus was a friend of sinners and he didn't go out to condemn people he was a friend of sinners he sat down with you know all kinds of folks now you've um, you have traveled much and preached the gospel much in many many places and you mentioned about knocking on the doors in your village where was the hardest place for you to preach the gospel the hardest place yes um i think it's always in your home home uh, uh, environment i think that's always probably the hardest um the hardest place when i've done missions uh 
not to offend any Welsh people, but one of the places <laughs> <laughs> was a little, little town in Wales. <laughs> um, so I'd, I have been up to Scotland a few times, but not really particularly on missions. But uh, but yeah, so there's you know in in when you're doing evangelistic missions, some some are difficult. Uh, you know, we went to a little town in North Wales, Bangor. We were there for two or three weeks, but we did leave a church behind, and that was that was great. Yeah, and it's still going today, and it's been a real mission church over the years. And we went there with just one one couple in the town that wanted to start a church. And uh, we went with a group of young people that helped to give out literature and so on. And uh, we had a converted single-decker bus parked in a field working for Assemblies of God on missions at that time. And there was a bull in the field which didn't help, <laughs> and uh, the farmhouse about 100 yards away, and uh, we used to have to get by this bull to get the milk in the morning. But, uh, you know, it, they, were, they were good meetings, really. So, as I say, we left a group of people, and, and uh, someone went after us and pastored, and the church is still going today. So some of those things are really rewarding. But at the time, they can be difficult times, you know, but it's a mixture. You, you, mm. you, the results are left with God at the end Amen. of the world. Now you have done many, many missions. And how did you fund all these missions that you travel on? Uh, well, the missions within Ascenders of God were funded by a, like a home missions uh, department. So churches across the country would, uh, you know, would give towards uh, those, those missions. Um, and and then, you know, in individual churches, they would they would fund them like we did in Wigan. You know, we the church was only 60, about 60 strong when we started, uh, you know, when I first came out of college. And uh... It was a faith venture, but uh, afterwards, you know, there were several hundred people attending every week. Um, and, yeah, so, uh, you know, it's a step of faith in, in some ways. Amen. Now, you've also preached in America and planted some churches in America. I just wanted to ask, uh, really, is there a different gospel preached in America as there is in the UK? Because, I mean, one American evangelist in the court has recently saying that Christ hasn't returned because people haven't given enough, given enough money. I mean, is it different in America, Christianity? <laughs> I'm not sure that's a quote from the famous American evangelist recently. I, I think America is a vast country and, and uh, you know, from one state to another, things, things are different. They even have different laws, you know, yeah. from state to state. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, there's always the extremes which... Uh, 
you know, I don't go for it all. I, I believe God wants to prosper us, but if this, if, if prosperity, uh, um, you know, if the, if, if the prosperity doctrine, if you like, uh, is true, it's got to work all the world over. It's got to work in India and Africa as yeah. well as America. And, uh, you know, my definition of prosperity is having your needs met with enough over to bless one or two other people as well. Not having a plane or a big swimming pool or three cars in the driveway. <laughs> you know, so all that kind of stuff is not in the Gospels. And, uh, yeah, some preachers uh, are that way inclined, but, uh, you know, one day, they, maybe they'll have to answer to the Lord as to how they've conducted themselves. As for me and my house, we're so yeah. glad we've got a house. <laughs> and, there, was, uh, there, was one other quote, there was one other quote recently where another evangelist said he wanted the people to buy him a new jet to avoid COVID restrictions. So that's just America for you. Yeah. But uh, before we finish, of course, um, uh, is there a team of guys that, that you work with, or do you, just, do you do it all on your own, or is there something you know that is there a team that works it out for you, or how would say if I wanted you to come to Sunderland to do a mission, how would how would I go about that? You just ask me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as well, that. You know, we like I said, we've got uh, we've got this awakening that we're looking to do. And really, basically, we're open to, uh, you know, any church, big or small. Uh, the numbers don't matter. And we're not in it for the money, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, we just want to go and help churches. And sometimes, uh, you know, I pastored little churches as well as bigger ones. And, and so, you know, we've got a heart just to help people. And, uh, and that's the thing. Sometimes the smaller churches get overlooked, but all... All people need to do if they'd like us to, uh, you know, if they want to consider us coming for a weekend is to, uh, you know, is just to contact us and, and uh, you know, we'll, we'll consider any church. Uh, and how will we contact you? Is that on, it's on, it's online or is... Um, yeah, you can contact me. You can contact us on um, our emails. So my, you want me to give my telephone number? Yes. But yeah, but no, you can get the email address if you want. Yeah. Well, it actually is talking about the USA. It's a long one, but it spells Keith and Val USA okay. at SBC Global.net. That's okay. Keith and Val USA at SBC Global.net. Excellent. Thank you very much. Excuse me. One final question, which I ask all the guests. Uh, of all the decisions you have made in your life, what is the most important decision you've ever made? The most important decision? Well, yes. that's, that's quite easy. That was uh, when I was 17 years of age and I made a decision to give my life to Jesus and uh, to invite him as my Lord and Saviour. Thank you, Keith. It's been fantastic speaking to you. Yes. Wish you very blessing in your, in your new travels. Thank and you. And of course, with the books that, which are available on Amazon. With that, I'm going to hand back to my brother, Alan at Wigan. Thank you. Thank you, George. And thanks again, Keith. Thanks for answering those questions and uh, Thank you. For sharing so great tonight. And please let us know uh, where you're going to be having these awakening meetings. And then we can pray for you. We have a prayer meeting every Thursday night. We can pray for you. And we pray God will bless you in, in that mission. You and Viv, because those people would have remembered Viv. He was on our Zoom meeting just a few weeks ago. So two great guys working together, hoping and believing to see an awakening in our country. Thanks, George. Thanks, Keith. And can I invite you all to join us again next week? But before I do, please, if you, have any, if you need any help, you want any prayer requests, please contact us on our hotline 079-4355-0287. Or if you're outside the UK with plus four four in front of that number, you can contact us on our website, lifestoriesworldwide.com. There you can find out lots of information. You can watch uh, all the Monday nights. We've been doing these Monday nights since March last year. Every Monday evening, we've had a speaker.
sharing their life story. You can catch up on all those stories. You can also find out uh, the question, how can I know God? You can click on that on our website and find out more information. But then, yes, let me invite you next Monday night, 8 o'clock, when we'll have another live story. This time, Michael Holloway from uh, Scotland. Uh, he had a problem when his parents divorced at the age of, when he was only 10 years old. He, had, he became unstable in, in his uh, life and had problems at school, got involved in drugs and, and uh, harder drugs, got in prison sentences, but then his life changed. And next week, Michael will be sharing his life story of what happened to him. So please join us again next Monday, 8 o'clock. Thanks, you all. Thank you, George. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Howard. And thank you all for watching tonight. May God bless you. May his love surround you. May you know his peace. And may you keep your eyes focused on the one who is the only way to eternal life. And God bless you all. Worship, brothers. Let's worship the King. Yes,
Hi, my name's Richie. I came into Teen Challenge November 14th, 2016, absolutely broken. My life prior was 12 years of drug and alcohol addiction, prison sentences, and just total dark misery. And if my life wasn't bad enough, three weeks before I came into Teen Challenge, three men attempted to take my life and I nearly died. And the trauma from that had me crippled with fear. But I came into Teen Challenge and I was told that my life didn't have to be that way. And I was introduced to an amazing man called Jesus Christ. And through the love of God and the love and support from the staff, um, I started to change, but not on the outside, in the inside as well. And after being in about six months, I'd done the best thing I've ever done, and that was I gave my life to Jesus Christ. And now sitting here four and a half years later, I'm a full-time support worker there. I have a beautiful wife, and I get to share what Jesus has done in my life and what he can do in other people's lives as well. Um, it's, it's such a blessing to be able to do that. And there's a Bible verse, it's Galatians 5.1, and it says it's for freedom that Christ has set us free. And sitting here right now, I'm free as a bird, and it's all because of the love of Jesus Christ. Thank you, God bless. Hi, my name's Ross. I'm from Greenock, and I'm 22 years old. Um, I came into the Haven on the 3rd of August, and my childhood and all that, I carried a lot of, about a lot of baggage with me growing up. There was a lot of trauma and a lot of stress and stuff like that. And when I came into the Haven, I learned about a, a guy named Jesus, and Praise the Lord, I was able to give him all my burdens and all the things that troubled me growing up and stuff like that. And the Teen Challenge has done wonders in my life. Jesus took me from that muck and mire and he set my feet upon the rock. And I'm so grateful that I, I'm able to know Jesus and have a relationship with him. And nine, nine months into the programme and stuff like that, I'm coming up for the end and my, my future's looking bright. Um, I'm, I spent many years polluting my community and now I'm actually able to go and give back to my community and I'm doing some voluntary work at the food bank and doing voluntary work. I'm looking for things to do to give back and stuff like that and my desires and stuff like that have slowly changed and I just praise God for, for what he's done in my life and it's good to see new people coming in and them giving their life to Jesus and um, it's an absolute blessing to be able to come here and do this sort of thing and um, my confidence has grew and I, I've got a, few, a bright future and praise God for that. Amen. Hi, my name's Steph. I am a singer-songwriter and worship leader. I gave my life to Jesus in 2006. I'd just come off for of the streets. I'd been homeless for about a year, ravaged with alcohol and drug addiction. It took 10 years to get that point in my life, probably the lowest I'd ever been. A mixture of trauma, abuse, loads of stuff. It was a progression to where I was sleeping out in the streets in Edinburgh. And I knew if I didn't change, I was going to die. I was taken in by the Bethany Christian Trust and one night when I was living there, I heard a man give his testimony and he told me how Jesus, following Jesus, had changed his life. When he offered me the opportunity to follow Jesus, I took it and I felt the spirit come into my, my heart and I felt a peace that I can't even begin to describe, but I knew that was the Holy Spirit coming into my life. I've never looked back. I'm very grateful for what I've got. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie in pastures green. The Lord's my shepherd, I will not want. He makes me lie. Guys, my. 